Hey everyone, Astronaut98 here. Yes, I am not dead. So, today we are building the Polaris Space Station from For All Mankind Season 3. Sorry I was gone for a week, I was helping uh, set up for my sister's wedding. Family before film, you know? So, here we are launching the core module of the Polaris Space Station using a Sea Dragon. Now, Sea Dragon would have been relatively cheap, very viable for a business such as Orbital Space Tours, or Polaris Orbital Space Tours. Now, the Sea Dragon here is basically run a mill, same one they used to launch uh, the modules as Jamestown, except we're launching the core of a space station. Now, this core is really cool because it actually spins. Getting that to not wiggle a lot was a real trick, but I did finally manage to get that nailed down. Uh, there may be a lot of wiggling in this video. I have made modifications to fix that in the version I will upload in Kerbal X. But here we go. Perfect separation from the Sea Dragon. And yes, that Sea Dragon has been modified to have SRBs to allow it to drop itself into the ocean after I'm done with it. And then we launch a space shuttle to start attaching the solar masts, as I'm going to call them. You know, they're like the giant boom arms on the ISS, but not. <laughs> They basically have just like two giant masses of solar arrays on each boom to collect as much sunlight as possible. Which, cool design thing about Polaris, uh, the way it works is because the station is spinning, it acts like a giant gyroscope keeping those solar panels directly oriented at the sun. Which is brilliant design by the show's art department. I mean, I would have never thought of that in a million years. However, their thruster work needs a bit of help. But yeah, here we are building the uh, solar booms so that way we can get some sweet, sweet, sweet electric amps booming in the booming in the bay. <laughs> now, these little uh, structures here, you can fit all of them inside the payload bay. I uh, had a lot of issues getting them to fit in the payload bay, but, you know, you do what you can. So here are the temp solar panels coming out here, along with another boom, and then one more temp solar panel. Now, the extensible uh, mechanical booms that I attach to these and launch on another shuttle are very, very finicky. They actually end up breaking later, and I do design a newer version of them that I forget to show oh, being launched and attached. Sorry, folks. My bad. But yeah, here we are taking the Space Shuttle Enterprise and bringing it back down to Cape Kerbin. That's right, Cape Kerbin. That's why I've decided I'm going to call this instead of Cape Canaveral, because it's on Kerbin, and it's a cape. Why not? Granted, not all... Not all superheroes wear capes. <laughs> so, here we are. A gentle, beautiful touchdown on the runway, mind you. No one cares about the grass and the tires. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> and perfect stop. So, and then we turn around and launch one more shuttle, carrying those extensible solar masts. Or solar booms, I guess. And we're doing a night launch of Space Shuttle Voyager. Yes. Once you actually uh, learn how to fly these shuttles, it becomes extremely easy, which is something I never thought I would say. But here we are, SRB separation. The funny part is those SRBs seem to be ridiculously fragile compared to the fuel tanks. But who am I to judge? Alright. Now, these are the booms that will malfunction later. Uh, yeah. I've figured out that the best way to go about this is to actually have your Kerbal build the booms himself and add a docking port on the end, and just attach that little piece right there that's creating the cross of the T. And now, here we go. We've got two of those booms fully extended and looking rather snazzy. Now let's add the other two. Yes, so I decided because I was feeling bad because 
I was helping out with my sister's wedding, that I give you something massive, beautiful, gorgeous to observe. Granted, I'm not that good at this game, but hey, we all do our best and we all do what we can to try and stay in this crazy game called life. Now, these were very hard to get to dock the first try. I actually had to launch these booms multiple times and lots of RCS thruster issues. But just look at that solar array deployment. It is magnifical. Now, here we are coming in for the other landing. This one I just didn't even try and aim for the runway. I ended up coming up really, really short. So I just ended up saying, you know what? I'm close enough. The ground service crew can get to me. There's no alligators. They'll be fine. <laughs> and a beautiful little rolling stop. All right. So now what we do is we launch what I like to call the spoke uh, elevators. That's probably the best description for them in the show. Now, these, I had to launch them one at a time until I figured out a better way to do it. I still think these, this is probably the safest way to go about doing this because keeping that uh, off-center engine thruster for the rotation uh, protected from upwards reentry heating is probably a good idea. Now, as you can see, the boosters are separated and it's inserted into orbit. And it literally just flies itself up to a docking port and docks. Well, technically you fly it to the docking port and it docks, but... Details, details. Now, once you've got it close enough, you just let the magnets grab a hold of it. And it'll suck itself right onto the station. Adding one of the four elevator shafts. Now... I did go with a different thruster design for the rotation than what they showed in the show. They had three thrusters pointing counterclockwise and one pointing clockwise, which ironically if you fired all four of them at once, you wouldn't result in a stall formation, you would result in a weird translate vector, which I tried to show in the opening of the video. But here we go, we have the second elevator shaft, as you can see these two are pointed in opposite directions. They're both pointing clockwise, and the other two I'll launch will be pointing in the counterclockwise direction, resulting in, if all four thrusters are firing, it results in a net thrust of basically nil, which is much, much safer, in my opinion. And I added some verniers as well, just to make it a little bit more show accurate. Alright, and here we are. Structure part elevator number three. In elevator number four, we have liftoff. And then we just quickly dock that to the station and get ready to work on the wheel, or the tread as I like to call it. Now, as you can tell, this thing is probably the most massive thing I've ever built. I mean, it even beats out my Jamestown build, which was pretty, pretty stinking massive. So what I did is I launched each part of the uh, tread in a straight stack in this attached to this uh, beautiful booster here I added some aerodynamic nose cones and everything else to have separate at a later time once I was out of the atmosphere then I just rendezvoused the old-fashioned way use the uh, little RCS rover to grab those fly them over to the docking port and have them grab now you're wondering why didn't you launch them in a curved formation that's where the breaking ground thing comes in. You actually have to tear these apart and build them on the other docking port. And then at, gently add a 5 degree curve roughly every 2 modules or something like that. I think it was 1 module, 5 degree curve, 2 modules, 5 degree curve. And you repeat till you get to a uh, reaction wheel and a docking port. And here's just a little pre-taste of what's going to happen later in the video. Yes, I did do this pretty much all by hand. I mean, I did have a few Kraken attacks where I had to uh, quick save, and boy was that annoying. But the good news is it was mostly, mostly by hand. I mean, I did have to uh, rebuild a couple parts and just launch them up. But, you know, it's a hard game. Space is hard. 
<laughs> no one said it was ever easy. And uh, what I'm doing here is actually not what you're supposed to do. Grab onto a hatch and line those things up carefully as best as you can. And then it should line up perfectly. If you do it all while free floating, it's going to end up with all sorts of weird, funky bends and twists. Trust me, I've tried. Here we go. Here's a nice good curve here. And then I go ahead and do the second one off screen because I forgot to record that one. But here we go, launching the other two of the treads. Three, two, one, lift off. Boom. Whoosh. And this is ground control. We have liftoff of Pol Polaris Station 16. Has cleared the tower. Now, I do love this space station. It's just... It's very much what Dr. Von Braun envisioned in the 1960s when he went on the Walt Disney Channel. I do recommend looking those up. They are beautiful, especially because... They did all the animation by hand. I'm pretty sure uh, people like uh, Jaden Animations and uh, Rebecca Parham of Let Me Explain Studios can definitely agree that animating something that intricate by hand is a pain. I mean, I did just a little bit of animation in high school and it was like, wow, this is hard. Yeah, that was. Yep, and there go the solar panels. They just broke themselves. So. Here we go. This is me showing you exactly what you're supposed to do. Now, this is how I learned to do it. It does work very, very well. I just find it to be a little tedious. I mean, if there was multiplayer for Kerbal, this could have gone a lot faster. I could have had, like, three friends come over and we could have banged all four parts out in an hour. But I had to do this by myself, and between working a full-time job helping out at the church and everything else it's just like when do i find time to sleep the answer to that question i don't i don't sleep but yeah be careful of the uh knockback if you uh climb too low and try and move the module it'll actually knock you off the station with a sufficient sufficient velocity to actually drain about half of your uh mon repellent in your backpack it's really kind of terrifying for a minute there I thought that I was going to lose uh, my Kerbal now to all of you who don't think I read the comments you better believe I do I read each and every one of your comments and I do want to thank you all so much for your support uh, this is this is just blowing my mind I never thought I would even get past a hundred subscribers let alone reach in the near 300 subscribers. I mean, just wow. You guys are awesome. So, thank you very much, and do spread the word, because who knows? If you guys want it, I might make some t-shirts or something when I hit 1,000 subscribers. It'd be cool if I actually do hit 1,000 subscribers, but you never know. Fate is a tricky mistress. Alrighty, and then we get that part all nice and lined up. Uh, be very careful, because uh, I don't know if this is a glitch or something, but the parts actually like to stay locked in their previous attitude. And yes, that is a spacecraft technical term. The attitude of a spacecraft can really uh, suck sometimes. Basically... If a part is in one specific orientation, it wants to stay in that orientation while it's attached to the other other part of the vehicle while you're trying to move it, and it can really mess things up. I mean, really mess things up. I mean, I've had RCS thrusters go inside of engines because of that. It was the weirdest thing ever. Now, what I did, and you're probably wondering why I put that uh, docking port on the engine. I found that you have to put a new docking port there, otherwise it just won't dock at all. I mean, I have no clue as to why. Um, maybe it's because I'm, like, one version out of date, but... Hey, I like to wait till 
things are good and fully checked out and fixed before I like to move on to the next version. I'm like, I'm just like that. I don't even buy a new car because if you buy a new car, you're going to have to deal with all the bad issues. But, yeah. So, I probably won't be one of the first adopters of KSP2. I might be in, like, the second round of people after they've worked out all the uh, post-release bugs. But, you never know. I could attempt to uh, be one of the early adopters. Who knows? I think that'd be rather cool. But... Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below, and if you are enjoying the video, do give us a like and subscribe, or ring that bell if you want to see more cool stuff like this. I do usually try and release uh, every two weeks, barring any uh, surprise overtime from my boss at work, or uh, family emergencies, because, you know, there's still a global biological infection going on. Alright. And then, but basically, this thing is so cool. I was just watching the episode again and again, and I was like, you know, I could fix this, I could do this, and I could do that. But then I was like, can my computer handle it? The answer, my good friends, is yes. My computer can handle Kerbal Space Program with this ship. However... <laughs> This is an 18 minute video. My uh, editing software, I'm not sure it's designed for videos any longer than five minutes. So, there's that. But I think this video turned out rather great. Uh, granted, it, it could use a few improvements, let's be honest here. But there's, my buddy keeps reminding me that the artist is always harshest on himself. I'm like, but I'm not an artist. He's like, yes, but it is a form of art. I'm like, art is in the eye of the beholder, not the artist. But if you are enjoying, do like, subscribe, share your thoughts in the comments below, and ring that bell. And here we go. Attaching the next to final piece. Nice. And lined up. Look at that wiggle. I mean, seriously. How... I'm, I'm curious to know where all this extra energy is coming from. And here we go. A beautiful spin-up. First time actually spinning this up, and it worked perfectly. Now, there are a lot of RCS to keep those solar panels in the right place, and I did re remove all braking on this motor. So basically, any torque being produced is going to be produced by the uh, housing that connects to the solar shaft. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. I release a new video every other week for your viewing pleasure, barring any issues. I am the Astronaut. Let's fly.